The sauce we're making in this recipe is absolutely delicious. It's all being served with fluffy mashed potatoes. There's so many different flavors going on and it's so easy to make. This is creamy mustard chicken. Starting off, as usual, we'll do the prep. We're going to need one brown or yellow onion. You can slice off the tip, leave the root intact, then we can slice it in half. Remove the skin and we can save that all for our stock. Slice across, stopping at the root, make the horizontal slice and dice into small to medium sized pieces. We're then going to need six cloves of garlic. These can be run along a microplane to create a paste. You can also crush them, roughly chop them and slice them. It's up to you. We're also going to need five grams of parsley, five grams of thyme and three grams of tarragon. These are all fresh. Obviously you can use dried. I'll have details about that in the description and just give these a rough chop just like so. I was originally going with two chicken breasts, which I do recommend for this recipe. I have three here, but these are really small, so I'm just compensating for that. What we're going to do is butterfly them, so slice them horizontally, follow the slice all the way along to open it up, and then we can slice it in half into two even-sized fillets. Add the chicken into a mixing bowl, then we're going to add in four grams of both onion and garlic powder, nice pinch of salt and cracked black pepper, 20 cracks worth. And then just get in there with a glove or some tongs and mix this until everything is evenly incorporated. Now with the chicken and sauce prep out the way, we can get our mash ready. This right here is one kilo of high starch potatoes. We can just peel these and save the skins. You can use them and roast them up in the oven to make little crispy potato skins. It's up to you what you want to do. We're going to place these into cold water, season it generously with salt, and then we can transfer it over to the stovetop, place it onto a high heat, bring it to a boil, and then we're just going to cook these for about 22 to 25 minutes until fork tender. In the meantime, we're going to place a large high rimmed pan over a medium high heat. Add in one tablespoon of olive oil, getting that nice and hot. Then we can add in the chicken. And if your pan's not big enough, I do recommend doing this in batches. We're just going to sear these for three minutes on this first side. What we're looking for is that beautiful golden brown crust. These can then be flipped over. And what we're going to do now is just cook these for about two minutes on this side because we're going to be adding in butter. And that is one tablespoon or 14 grams worth. I would usually tilt the pan so the butter falls down to the bottom and then we can baste it over. But because we've got the high rimmed pan, it's going to be a little bit harder. So just allow that butter to melt and just keep flipping the chicken for about one minute just to get that flavor all over there. And then once it's golden brown on both sides, we can remove it and place it into a clean bowl and set it aside. Into the same pan, add in two teaspoons of olive oil. Then we can add in the onions. Make sure you scrape the bowl so we don't waste anything. Season it up with a little bit of salt. And then we're going to saute this for about three to four minutes, just so it can pick up all of that flavor of the chicken and get a little bit of translucency to it, as well as color. Once that's done, add in the garlic and cook this for one minute. Make sure you break it up really well if you have grated it. And just keep mixing this around as well. This is just going to prevent it from burning because garlic can burn really easily and it will become bitter. To deglaze the pan, we're going to add in 125 milliliters or half a cup of white wine or chicken stock or vegetable stock if you can't consume alcohol. Give this a really good mix through, allow it to come to a simmer, and then just cook it for about two minutes until it's reduced and is nice and thick. Then we're going to add in our mustards, which is 30 grams of Dijon mustard and 20 grams of whole grain mustard. The whole grain mustard is optional, but please do add the Dijon because obviously it is creamy mustard chicken, so it would be pointless without it. Give this a really good mix through until combined and cook it for about one minute. We're then going to add in 250 milliliters of thickened cream, also known as whipping cream with a fat percentage of 35%. Mix this through really well for those flavors to become friends. The color will become a nice golden brown color. And I do recommend checking it for seasoning at this stage, adjusting if necessary with salt and cracked black pepper. I ended up adding another 30 cracks worth, but the amounts are completely up to you. We also want to bring this up to a simmer now, give this a really good mix through for those seasonings to get in there as well, and then reduce the heat to low and cook this for about 8 to 10 minutes or until thick. Going back to our potatoes, they're now fork tender, pretty much falling apart when we poke them. These can be removed and drained. The way you mash them up is completely up to you and what you have. I have a potato ricer here, which is really easy. You just put the potatoes in, push it down, and they come out quite smooth. You can also use a moolie. You can do it by hand, even in a blender or a stand mixer. It's up to you. And once you have that done, I'm going to add in 180 milliliters of warmed milk. You can do that in a pan or a microwave, as well as 50 grams of unsalted butter. Then use a spatula and just fold this all together until it's nice and smooth. If you want it really smooth, you can pass it through a sieve, but I'm going a little bit rustic on this one. And be sure to make sure you adjust the seasoning levels to your taste as well. But once that's all done, just mix this around and then we can set this aside until we're ready to serve. If you want to heat it up really quickly, just flash it in the microwave. Now, after eight minutes on the sauce, you have this beautiful, thick, rich sauce. If you scrape it through, there should be gaps either side like so. We're going to then add in all of our herbs. Just fold this through, cook it for about one minute. You can also turn the pan down to a medium heat right now. But once that's combined, we can then add in the chicken as well as all of the resting juices for extra flavor. 
and then just fold these all together. Make sure you spread them out evenly so it's completely covered in the sauce. And cook this for about one more minute just to get the heat through the chicken. If the sauce does become a little bit too dry, you have got the pan too hot, you can adjust it and make it a little bit more runny by adding in some more stock or even some more cream, but that is completely up to you. And then we can remove this from the stovetop. For serving up, I like to lay down a big bed of mash. This recipe should serve four people if you've used two large chicken breasts. You can also adjust it to serve more depending on portion size. Then add over that delicious chicken. I'm going with three of those fillets because they're so small. Spoon over lots of that delicious sauce, making sure it's completely smothered. And then what we have right here is a beautiful creamy mustard chicken. And this is without any garnish. You can add basil, parmesan cheese, all sorts of different things. Or if you want to do what they do in restaurants and then charge you more than $100 for the dish, just add some snow pea tendrils, which cost about a dollar for a kilo. And this right here is our finished product. It's absolutely delicious. It smells and looks beautiful. And I can't wait to get dug in. As always, though, there's only one thing left to do, and that is we can then dig in. So many flavors going on in this. It's fresh, it's creamy, it's rich, absolutely delicious. The fresh herbs in there really do elevate the sauce. And then you've obviously got the tang from the mustard. Chicken's beautifully cooked. That mash is soft and fluffy. You can change the consistency as well with that by adding more milk and butter. Up to you how you want to do it or even pass it through a sieve to make it even smoother. Definitely do make this recipe. It's absolutely delicious. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Really does help me out. Helps the channel be seen by more people. And consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.